This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. They call this place the Big E. Auto racing showcase since 1954. Eldora Speedway is one of the top dirt racing tracks in all of the United States of America. And today, the major series European Splits top drivers are all set to tackle this tough dirt track for the Kings Royal for 2019. Welcome to today's coverage here on RaceBot TV, the iRacing Esports Network, for what looks to be a good one on this just under half mile dirt circuit. The air is hot, the sun is hot, and the clouds are floating above the sky as we get all set to go for today's racing action. I'm Justin Prince, on side of the move tonight is Linus Bromstrom with Hugo Ruiz in the director's seat. And cameras provided by TrackCams22.com. This is expecting to be a very tough one for some of these drivers. Some of them not used to racing on the dirt per se here, Linus. It will be a bit of an adjustment period as seen by some of the drivers in practice so far. Yeah, it's going to be a very spread out field here today. A few drivers that are very, very used to this. A few of them doing one of their first races here on the dirt. So uh, it's got we got a very wide spread of uh, knowledge about this sort of racing today. But I think we're going to be in for some pretty exciting racing and some very intense heats. Yes, indeed. 31 total drivers looking to tackle the dirt here today. Here's the format for the Kings Royal for the Major Series. Six total heats will be available, eight drivers per heat, but no top five invert. That was a last minute change prior to today's races after the results of the international split. 15 laps for each of the heats, no caution flags, so no mistakes could be had in those situations. The top three advance for, to the A main from each heat. There are two consolation races also on play with 25 laps. No cautions for those though as well with the top three also advancing to the A main. In total, 24 cars are scheduled to make the main for today. 40 laps. Cautions on are on for single file restarts. No green white checker though as these drivers will all try and fight their way to get into that main to get the top points and the trophy for today's races. And Linus, as you're looking here on the left side of your screen, lots of drivers having good seasons. Christian Chowner leading them away in the point standings. Magnuson coming away in second coming into tonight. The Chowner's had a really good season so far, and he's on top in qualifying here as well. So he's looking to uh, build on that through the night here, I would uh, guess. He's uh, obviously come at great pace here. Not quick in practice, but he didn't do too many laps, I don't think. So... Uh... He's, uh, he's definitely going to be one to be look, keeping your eye on here today. Mateus Magnuson also taking part today in second, the points. Gabriel Ruse in third. Velarde not amongst the drivers in the session quite yet. Niskanen rounds out the top five. Wolf also looking to try and pick up pace at the back end of the qualifying. Some drivers, though, are going around the racetrack at the moment and trying to ear put in their said times and are good experience. These drivers have five minutes Three laps total for qualifying. So Sol is amongst the drive Danny Sol is amongst the drivers trying to get used to this track surface. We were talking a little bit about this before. We were about the challenges for these drivers. What do you expect from the cars here today? As as you can see with some of the times, they are very quick. Yeah, the top guys here are really quick. The times aren't that much spread out. It's about just over half a second between the fastest and the slowest guys. And uh, through the night, the track will obviously wear down and uh, get quicker and quicker. So, and obviously the grip will slightly go away for some of the people that are not really used to it e either. So it's they're really going to have to chase the dirt going up the track as the night goes on. 
And mind you, in some of the races this season, there have been a pro split and a sportsman split. This allows drivers that we may not see often to be able to get exposure here today for the Kings Royal. Guys up there, like Nicholas Greet, seeing him for one of the first times this season, is up inside that top 10. Gaunt, eighth on the board in qualifying. Lots of drivers looking to make good impressions here today. The top drivers in qualifying, though, Chalonier, DiSenjo, along with Andreas Robertson, Thomas Peterson, Gabriel Roos inside the top five. Rowley Thompson just outside that said picture. But we are just moments away from the first heat races of the day. Again, 15 laps of the distance. Grand total of six heats have been split upon for the drivers. And the first of which are about to hit the racetrack here. It should be some great action, starting with heat race number one. Grid now up on your screen. Christian John here on the pole for heat race one. Gabriel Rules will follow him behind with Mateus Magnussen third in the heat. Cordell Cologne will start fourth with Colin Martsoff in fifth. Lyndon Swabby sixth. Joshua Wolf in seventh. While Sam Watley rounds out the eight drivers in this first heat. A mix of torque freak racing drivers, kinetic racing machines, as well as Grizzly Motorsports drivers in heat race number one. What do you expect to see here racing-wise as the day progresses? Well, the first heat, I think, uh, not going to be too much uh, beating and banging going on. I expect Challenger to take the lead here pretty comfortably, and then uh, Gabriel Roos and Magnussen probably going to have a quite big battle for second, third there, fourth with uh, Colin and Marsov, but I think it's going to be really, really tight for the last transfer spot, though I expect uh, Chal Challenger to uh, pull away from the get-go here. Should note, the drivers of throughout the week had the opportunity to qualify to set their specific splits for some of the regions. Challenger was on top of that board as well as the only driver in the 13-second bracket in some time, 17.42 as the drivers get around the racetrack. 90 degrees Fahrenheit for the green flag. Clouds are going across the racetrack as they line up behind the iRacing official pace truck for heat race number one of the European region's Kings Royal for the major series. They'll continue to circulate around before they take the green flag, but this is gonna be a track that we might see multiple lines and we've seen drivers like Brad Sweet in the real Kings Royal just in a couple weeks ago utilize different lines and try and utilize the slide job while others try to ride along the cushion to maintain pace liners. Yeah, that's going to be one thing to look for us as well. The more experienced driver is obviously going to have the upper hand here and now seeing only six cars in this heat by the looks of it, uh, it's not going to be, uh, there's going to be a lot of room to make those kinds of maneuvers and uh, if you can find the best grip in the dirt, you're going to be able to pull off some amazing slide jobs and undercuts here. So we'll have to see as we come to the green flag. Christian Challenger will bring them to the green flag. We're racing for the Kings Royal. And a good start for Challenger up at the front. Already utilizing the middle line. Mateus Magnussen side by side with Cordell Cologne as Cologne tries to back away from the cushion early. It's a very good start for Challenger. Magnussen in second here. He's up the inside behind. They're coming up on a lap car that started from the pits here as well. But Cologne dropping back a bit behind Magnussen, going a bit wider up to the up to the outside wall, but he stays off it, so fourth place is closing in here. That's uh, Joshua Wolf. All the drivers utilizing the bottom line to the middle bottom in the early going of this one. Just a couple laps into this feature, 12 laps to go. Chowner in first, Magnus in second, but Cologne trying to hold on to the transfer spot on the bottom side. Joshua Wolf can't complete the slide job. He cannot, and here comes Marcel behind us again, but Wolf up the inside of Cologne again. They almost make contact. That's going to slow him way down. Here comes Colin Marcel again, trying to get into that battle. Joshua Wolf still on the inside. Oh, as we have the slow car on the outside, they're going to avoid him. Uh, but Cologne is going to hold on to that third spot for now. Wolf is still looking on the inside. Oh, and Marcel in fifth. Cologne pinches off Wolf on the bottom side. As he rides the middle line, Cologne moves into the transfer spot for Grizzly Motorsports. On the left side of your screen, the wide shot of the action. On the right side of the screen, the onboard with the fifth place driver, that is Colin Martsoff, that is trying to make the bias passes for gun speed. Can't get by Wolf quite yet, though. Now he's going to have to settle for fifth for now. Wolf not quite keeping up with Cologne. He's opened up a slight gap, but one mistake, and uh, Wolf will be right back there. But Cologne. Uh, Getting a bit wide there. Wolf almost hitting the wall as well. well Marcel is all over the back of him. He's all the way down to the bottom. That's going to hold him, hold his speed down a bit, coming onto the straightaway. And he's, he's trying everything, but he just can't get there. And Wolf is up the back of Cologne again. 
The two kinetic machines have pulled away by more than three seconds in first and second. The battle for the transfer spot still on with six laps to go this time by. Wolfsman trying to utilize the bottom side. A bit more moisture still above the cushion as Cologne starting to ride his rear tires into the set moisture on corner entry. He's trying to get as much speed as he can, and this time he might have a run on Wolf. He's going to move up the inside. He's going to try and get a slide jump. He's not going to move up a lot, though. He's going to stay in there, but they're going to be side by side across the line here. Wolf still on the outside, and Morisov is getting up the inside of Cologne, and he's going to put oh! Wolf in a wall. And Wolf is spinning around on his side. That is unfortunate for Joshua Wolf in the battle for the final for the transfer spot. That makes it a two-car battle for that spot with four laps to go. He'll have to work for the main, for the main, B main. Martsov on the bottom side, Cologne now trying to go closer and closer to the cushion as Martsov can't get the slide jump. He's trying everything he can, but he, he's going to go high this time. Cologne is moving to the bottom, Martsov going to try and get the run off the cushion on the outside, he's going to get close and he's going to try and cut to the inside again, going to try and get a slide over and he's going to hit the wall. And that is, I think, going to be it. It looked like he nearly hit the wall the last time by as well, so that loses a ton of momentum. Here's a look at the replay though for Joshua Wolf. As you can see, it looked like he just hit the rear tire of Martsov trying to make that pass on the high side. But now one lap to go. The battle for the transfer spot is still on. Cologne looking a little bit quicker last time by. He was a tenth slower. Christian Chowder will win heat race number one. His teammate Magnuson in second. But Cordon Cologne, Cordell Cologne will hold on to the transfer spot and move on to the A main. Really good job there by Challoner, er, Challoner and Magnuson getting those top two spots and uh, good job as well by Cologne holding off there from a hard charging car behind him. So a very, very interesting race so far and uh, on to the next one. Martsov, Watley, Ruse, Wolf and Swabi will have to work their way through the, the alphabet essentially for today's race. Is a quick update from race control, just four heats total now. For the drivers with the 31 cars competing in today's events here the drivers though in heat race number two dakota dc enzo looked good in qualifying he'll start on the inside with tdr he'll start alongside his teammate riley thompson for this heat race utilis puticlis will start third with claude perval in fourth and rico leinhardt in fifth with corbin solmason in sixth position robert lundgren and Jared Morgan round out the eight drivers taking part in heat race number two of the day. It's going to be a very interesting heat this as well. But again, pole sitter has, uh, was about one and a half tenths clear of the rest in qualifying. So expect uh, Dakota to drive away a bit like Chandler did there. Uh, eight cars in this heat though, unlike the other ones. So a lot more cars to battle for that last transfer spot. And a bit of a technical issue, it looks like now, for the first place car. We'll have to see if that has an impact for him in this heat race as it looks to try and settle down. But the driver's looking to not be as settled for the transfer spot. Pudiclis will start on that bubble in P number three. You see that blue machine on the bottom side. And the triple six on the outside of him will be Burval. But it's DC Enzo in control for TDR. Green flags out already. And DC Enzo with a gigantic jump to start off heat race two. Yeah, that was a really good launch from him as he gets away with the lead. We got Riley Thompson and uh, Putkelis uh, behind him in second and third. And that's uh, not going to be too many more people battling for that last transfer spot at the moment. Enrico Leonard is uh, about half a second behind. They've got a big bunch of cars there for fifth place. But. Uh, Top three driving away at the moment. You're looking at Robert Run Lundgren wanting to make some moves, trying to use the bottom side diamond in the corner. This time, though, going to be one of the first drivers to utilize the cushion up towards the wall. As this race goes on and as the heats go on, this track is going to start to change more and more. We're seeing these drivers, compared to heat race one, move up the track here, Linus. Yeah, they really are. We see sixth place there, Lundgren again, way up by the wall in that cushion trying to get as much momentum as he can, but Corbin Solmanson is closing in from behind, so he's gonna have to watch out for that. He can't can't seem to get the speed that he wants from that, and uh, fourth place Enrico Leonard is not closing in on third either, so the battle for that last transfer spot is not gonna happen just quite yet. Keep an eye though on the number nine machine. The fastest car the past two laps around 
and not just the lap, but the entire heat so far. Lundgren wanting to make a pass now for fifth. Claude Berval having to play defense for Can-Am Racing right in front of him as you see on board. Lundgren's moving way down to the inside. He's going to move up to the wall again. He tried to bottom there for the first time, I think, in this race. It didn't quite work out for him. He's up by the cushion again, and he's going to try and get a run. He can't get close enough, though. He's going to have to keep on riding around there until he can get quite just close enough to make a move as we got a pass for the lead here. Riley Thompson winding up past his teammate. DC Enzo loses the top side as Thompson rides the cushion to take the lead away with seven laps to go in the heat. The battle also heating up now for third in the transfer spot as Leinhardt has made the pass on Pudiklis. Happened quite at the same time, so we kind of missed that, but that was a good pass from Enrico Leinhardt up into third, but uh, Pudiklis is not backing off. He's going to try and get that position back as soon as he can. He's going to move to the inside, try and get the speed off the turn, but that's not really going to happen. Uh, sorry, Leinhardt is using the cushion and getting the speed onto the straightaway as he's actually starting to pull away. Yeah, the way that pass developed was the same way we've seen for the race lead. Right the cushion, take away the bottom, the high line on corner exit, right on by. And now Pudiklis is losing time, now moves up to the cushion, falling back towards Burval, as you see just behind his blue machine. The gap is now about four, five, six car lengths as he continues to try a different line. Three laps to go in heat race two. Riley Thompson holding on to the lead and he's actually the fastest car around the track now. Lundgren back in sixth. He's uh, kind of lost out the speed now. He can't find the grip in the cushion anymore. So uh, Thompson driving away with the lead with uh, DeCiento, DeCiento in second and Leonhardt pulling away in third place. So he's probably by the looks of it now going to get the last transfer spot. White flag coming up in the air for Riley Thompson. As you see him now pull away from DC Enzo. Fastest car again on the track last time by a 13-6. A tenth off the quickest pace. DC Enzo tries one last gasp on the bottom. But in the end, it is Riley Thompson taking heat race two. DC Enzo second. Lionheart, Leon Hart in third. Pudiklis not able to reach on back. So one, two in heat race two for TDR. Yeah, that's two doubles for two teams so far tonight. Let's see if that will continue on through the night. But uh, another really exciting race. It's not as much battling, but uh, some good passes for a first and third there. Look at the race results. Total downforce racing to 1-2. As mentioned, Lionheart in third. Pudiklis, Burval, Lundgren, Somerson, and Mor Morgan all have to go through the B mains now after that one. But heat race number three getting all set to go already. And it sees another TDR driver leading them off to the green flag this time. It is Andreas Robertson, who will start alongside Nicholas Skeet on the front row. Adam Fasiponsi will start in third, but Trevor Vrabowski will start in fourth. Lonnie Finch is in fifth with Travis Henderson in the sixth position, but Michael Lane and Danny Sowell rounding out the eight drivers in heat race number three. From what we've seen in the first couple races, what do you expect now that we've seen the cushion come in can much more compare to Heat Race 1? Well, I expect the cars to be up by the cushion all the way from lap number one and not a lot of driving being done on the bottom until they're going to put a slide job on somebody to, uh, to make it pass. So I expect everybody to try and find that cushion as soon as possible here in this one. And again, Robertson is in control of the field. Scandinavia region driver will control the field on the inside line. And we've seen them go essentially as soon as the pace car starts to head down the pit lane here. What do you expect from the TDR driver in this one? Well, I think that depends on the other cars. He wants to try and get as big of a jump as possible. And if somebody's got to run on him, he's going to have to wait. But if nobody seems to be on top of the game, then he's just going to floor him and pull the gap like we saw in the last race. We'll see how they control the restart here this time. Robertson slows them down, bunches them up, slams the gas, green flags out, we're underway. Oh, contact already. And that is Fasi Ponte making contact that time with Trevor Vrabowski. He's now spinning on his side, but we are still running and going as Travis Henderson, with all that contact, moves up to third. Yeah, that was a very interesting race. Third and fourth, they just hooked each other on the right away from the get-go before even the line. And Adam Fisiponti is out of this race, so he's going to have to go through the B main to try and get into uh, the A main later on tonight. Heat race number three rolls on. 15 laps to the side. The, who, the top three are to punch their ticket directly to the A main. 12 to go this time by Henderson with all that contact, though. 
was able to jump ahead by nearly a full second. His teammate Favrosky, though, is dealing with Danny Solo, who's trying to slide job him on the bottom side. That's a good effort there by Solo, but Favrosky is holding on to the top, and Solo stays down there. He's going to have to clear him here and move up into that cushion if he wants to make that pass, but he's giving Ravoski the outside lane coming off the corners, and that gives him great speed off that cushion. As he moves up again, but he can't quite get in front. Nearly cleared him that time with the slide job. We'll try it one more time. Tries to utilize a bit of the moisture in turn three. Tries to use some more on the bottom in turn four, but can't get the job done. So retreats back to the cushion. No, loses the cushion to Lonnie Finch, who will make contact for P number five. Here's a look at the replay, though. What happened at that start here, Linus? Uh, they just come together. One moves up and one moves down, and they meet in the middle. And, uh, well, very unfortunate for both of them. But uh, thankfully, they've still got a chance to move into the A main, though they might be starting all the way at the back if they get there. Robertson's in first. Second is currently Skeets. Third is Henderson. Fourth is still contested, though, as Lonnie Finch wants to make a move. But Solo tries to squeeze him down in the battle for fifth. This is not for a transfer spot, mind you. They would need to catch up to Travis Henderson to have that position, but they're driving like it's the said transfer spot right now. Well, one little incident in front, and it could very well be the transfer spot, so it's just as important for them in case something happens. And here comes Solo, and I'm moving to the bottom. He's going to try and put a slide job on him. He's going to clear him, and he's going to move up. He's not going to move up all the way, though. He's going to leave him that room, and that is uh, not a very good move by Solo. He should have moved all the way up to the wall there, and he would have had that fourth position. And as we and see a so car crashing on the pit lane. That is Lonnie Finch that ended up losing control, trying to stay on the cushion and hook straight into the barrels. And now you see Solo still in the battle, though, for fourth position now with Favrosky. They're slowly, surprisingly, on top of this, just about a tenth, if not even, with Henderson, who's just topped the wall. Here comes Solo on the inside again. He's going to put the slide job on him. Is he going to come up in front of him this time? No, he's going to give him the outside once again. I think he's being way too nice here, Daniel Solo. He needs to just come up to cut the line off and force uh, Ravaska to use the bottom, but he doesn't do it. He just stays down there and gives him the outside. Can he clear him? Would need to clear him here. Verosky nope. tries to come down, in fact, this time in the corner exit, as they're still side by side. And now they're losing ground to the man on the bubble spot, Travis Henderson, who is now 1.6 seconds up the road. White flag up on the stand for Andreas Robertson, who has pulled away to a 1.7 oh, second Oh, car in the wall in front of him. That is uh, Henderson. He got in the wall, but I think he's going to be able to make it all the way around to this checkered flag. He is, yes. Robertson takes the checker flag, second is Skeets, third is Henderson, so he keeps the transfer spot. So Grizzly Motorsports' driver holds on to his own teammate to move on to the A main. And an exciting one once again in what was a back and forth battle for fourth position. The drivers that don't advance though is those drivers in said battle, Vavrovsky Solo, Michael Lane, Lonnie Finch, Adam Fasciaponte do not move on. They will have to go through the alphabet. Uh, not a really exciting race there, but like I said, I think Solo was being way too nice to uh, fourth place there. So I, I think if he had gotten by early, I think he could have been in the battle for third, but unfortunately being too nice and now he has to go through the B main. That it does count a little bit for the track position though in the mains for where you battle, so it's not just as simple as the transfer. If you can't make it, you still can battle. Thomas Peterson will be battling at the front with Mike Gaunt for heat race number four. Meanwhile, Kirk Crum starts them off in row number two alongside his teammate Marcus Niskanen for Bombshell Motorsports. Mar Mason Martsoff will start fifth. His Gaunt speed teammate and namesake had a good run in heat race one. He'll start alongside Stefan Wayne. Rounding out the drivers is Patrick Neese. That rounds out the 31 total drivers taking part in today's races. Seven total will be in heat race number four here. Now the question is here, with this being the last chance to punch your immediate ticket into the A main, do you see the aggression level going up as we've seen in some different races and series on the dirt? Uh, it's possible. It depends uh, pretty much how clean the start is. But again, everybody's going to be battling for that top line up by the cushion. So... Uh, all depends on how they can get away in the start. Let's see. Here we go. The Swede of Thomas Peterson takes the green flag. This time, Bo, though, Mike Gunn able to keep up. Already one driver up in the fence and Marcus Niskanen, but the battle's on for second spot. Kirk Crum nearly banning doors with Mike Gunn. 
Moving up to second on the slide job as Crum as he can't slam the door. He tried to get up in front, but he saw that Gaunt had too much speed, so he gave him the room and avoided the crashes. He's still in third, so that's still in a transfer spot. That's a good call by him. Now he's just going to have to get on that cushion and get up to speed again and try and catch back up to, uh, to second place. As uh, behind him, they're side by side for fifth. That's Vong and Marcel. He's actually going to clear. Wands up to P4, while Mason Martzov falls to P5 on the board. Marcus Niskan, after contacting the wall, has dropped to sixth position. Patrick Neitz is just watching on behind them. But Marshall the transfer the spawns to But he's able to keep on going. He just clipped it slightly, so he's not going to slow him down too much. Indeed, it looks like Niskanen having a bit of a rough one. You see on the replay, Niskanen rolled the wall at one point on that first lap. And somebody's in the wall down the bottom. It's the leader, Thomas Peterson, has spun out. Thomas Peterson hit the outside wall with the right, right rear tire and put himself into the garage. That changes everything for the complexion for the bubble spot. It really does. It moves it back to Stephen Wong and Marcin Marcel, and they are all over each other right here. So from being all for uh, fourth is now turned into actually Marcel has dropped off Wong so it, it that just moves him into the transfer I was watching the wrong cars Niskan is up there battling for fourth with Marcel so Marcel has dropped way back and he's seen on the left side of your screen on the replay that right rear tire rode on top of that concrete wall which ended up causing the situation there now though Marcus Niskan is in fifth battling with Mason Marcel for fourth from that and they're going to have to try and find time to gain up on Kirk Run and Stefan Wayne up the track. They're going to get some luck though as Wayne did scrape the wall in front. They're still single five for fourth and fifth. They are not too much battling going on here. Now Mortal has actually pulled away slightly from Niskan and again. So he's going to have to do everything he can not to catch up to Stefan Wong. But I think he's, uh, he's just riding around here now trying to get through these last five, six laps to uh, get this third place and get into the A main. Five laps to go, fastest time of the race for Mike Gaunt, that time by a 13.8. As they continue to scrap it out for that for the positions, Mike Gaunt, though, in comfortable control. The question is, can he keep the comfortability, especially with the drivers behind him starting to tap off the walls? Yeah, he just needs to keep it clean. Uh, three laps to go, so I think he'll be able to do it. The cars behind not cl really closing in either. It was one-tenth faster than the last lap, so it's not enough to just keep it out of the wall. And uh, he will go through with uh, the battle between Marcel and Niskanen, though, for fourth and fifth. is not going to be uh, anything more happening there either by the looks of it. So this one is uh, pretty much over unless somebody crashes out. Two laps to go. Four tenths of a second difference between fourth and fifth in heat race number four. Before we head off towards the alphabet and the consolation races here, you can see on your screen Marcel gaining a little bit more ground on Marcus Niskin and a little bit more comfortable in the speed as the white flag's up on the stand for heat race number four. Mike Gaunt comes out of turn four, will take heat race number four and dominates the race after a, cr a crash by the leader early on in this one. Kirk Crum second, Stefan Wan in third moves on. Mason Martzoff, Marcus Niskanen, and Patrick Nies, Thomas Peterson will all have to work their way through the alphabet here, Linus. Yeah, it's going to be uh, tough for them and Thomas Peterson definitely going to have his work cut out for him having crashed out there, but uh, he's going to be moving straight into the B main and start last, one of the last cars, so he's going to need a very clean race and a very good race moving up for the field there. So it's going to be interesting to watch, but first we go to the C. Yes, indeed, as you continue to look at the race results, C main and B main will see 25 laps, six advancing from each. The first of the drivers to the green flag will be Colin Martzoff alongside Trevor Pabrowski in the C main. Sam Watley starts in third with Danny Solo inside the top four after a pretty strong run in his heat. Gabriel Ruse also looking to show some speed in fifth, on side, Michael Lane. Joshua Wolf was involved in that slide job contact in his heat. Real start seven. Donnie Finch will try not hit the barrier in this one starting in row four. Lyndon Swaby rounds out the nine drivers in the same main. Again, 25 laps the distance here, Linus. No caution flags like the heats, though. So this could be crucial. Also could be crucial. Sam Wheatley will be starting from the pit lane, it looks like. 
Yeah, that's massive for him, starting third, but he misses the grid, so he's going to start from pit lane. Though there is six cars moving uh, onto the A main out of these uh, nine, so only three aren't going to go on. Uh, so he still obviously have a great chance to move on as long as he can get out of the pits quickly and uh, have an incident or two happen in front of him. And you've seen the Grizzly Motorsports driver try and move the wheel to say, please let me leave the pits. Unfortunately, didn't join in time. Maybe missed it by just a second or two, which can happen here on the iRacing service. That moves everyone up on the bottom, up a position. Rose will start third now. Wolfen in fifth. Lyndon Swaby will start in seventh. Seven total drivers on the track for the green flag here. Lonnie Finch also will start from the pit lane for the C main here. 25 laps, top six advance. Who will be able to take the checker flag and who will punch their ticket into the A main to try and have a shot to win the European Sport Kings Royal. You're about to find out. Colin Martsov hits the low pedal off and racing once again. A good start from Roos in third, already gets the second. Vrosky had a very wiggly start there as well. If we have contact for second, that's uh, Roos and Wolf, but Wolf, uh, Catches that slide, so he's going to keep on going in fourth, but that's going to obviously drop him down as here comes fifth as well. Now Daniel Solo going to try and look around the outside of him, but he's not going to quite get there. Michael Lane's up inside the wall now. Lyndon Swaby was the one who made contact, it looks like. So one driver already is back into the pit lane. The drivers who have to start from the said lane have already exited their way. So right now the leader, Colin Martzoff for the c main, Gabriel Roots in second, Trevor Bobrovsky third, Joshua Wolf in a battle on three car battle, three wide on the slide chop, Danny Solo able to make the pass on Wolf to get to four. You almost got into third air as well, and here comes the next slide job on Bavarski, and he, again, he's not going to move up, but he's going to get him cleared anyway, so if he can move up here in the middle of the corner, he might be able to hold on to that third. It's just almost up to the inside of Gabriel Ruse for second, but here comes Bavarski again on the outside as he's not close in the door up there, Daniel Solo. And you see th two, three drivers on the top side. Solo, the only driver trying to utilize the middle and bottom at the moment. Wolf is going to try and join them, though, in the panel for position. This again is for second now with Gabriel Ruse. Hard charge for Solo. Carries the speed with the downforce. Can't hold too much, though, as he has to go to 96 miles an hour. Yeah, he, he just needs to move up in front, but he's not doing that at the moment. And here comes Ruse again around the outside, but Solo is going to clear him this time. So uh, Solo up to second, Roos down to third, Wolf and Bavarski right behind there trying to find a gap as well, but all of these are through to the A main as of now. is all about starting positions, what you can do. And here comes Wolf all the way to the bottom. He's going to pass Roos, but he's not going to be able to slide up in front as he make contact. Making contact, but still Wolf able to get up to P3. Roos drops another spot and tries to carry the momentum, but rides through some of the slick stuff. A large amount of the slick is currently four-fifths up the track if you look in the corners as well as the high land line on corner entry and exit. That's that shining dirt you're seeing on this track with 16 laps to go. And that time Ruse slid his way through that slick and lost a spot. He did, that's Barsky moving up to fourth and now he's got his eyes set on Joshua Wolf for third and Daniel Solo in front of these guys, he's just set off. But here it goes again all the way to the bottom of Barsky, he's not going to be able to do it. The Wolf is going to hold on to that third spot. Roos behind him is being caught up by uh, Lyndon Swaby as well. So that's battle for uh, the last two transfer spots. It's going to heat up as well. But here he goes all the way to the bottom again. Uh, but Wolf is going to hold on. So Bavarski going to have to uh, just try and get up into that cushion and get a better run into the corner, I think. Again, top six advance here in the C main directly to the feature. Wolf is currently battling side by side still for position with Trevor Bavarski. Bobrovsky looking to get up to the top three, does it with a slide job. Now tries, has to try and focus on getting back up to Danny Solo. Now the question is, can he keep up with him? Last time by, Bobrovsky was a couple tenths quicker than Solo. Oh, contact, one car is down into the wall and he's flipping, I believe and that is Bobrovsky. Trevor Bobrovsky. Trevor Bobrovsky, who had bad luck in the last road course event, where he flipped upside down, flips on his side here today. And Vavrovsky will have to take the toe, and that can be the end of his C main, and could mean big things for Lonnie Finch. Lonnie Finch is promoted up into sixth place despite being a lap down there, so that was exactly what he needed, one car to go out, and uh, that just happened. So Finch is now in sixth place and going to automatically go through to the A main, uh, despite starting from pit lane and being way behind everybody else. And as you can see on the left side of your screen, the replay might have been contact from behind from Wolf, he just, however, took that tire barrier on the inside of the wrong angle. Unfortunate luck for him. 
Swabby is also running his way around the track now in P4. Four seconds back of the race leader and trying to gain up time after having a rough first heat race. And here comes Wolf around the outside of Solo. He's caught right up to him and Solo is still running that bottom lane for some reason. Wolf is running that cushion and he's just going to clear him and drive away from him straight away. And here comes Lyndon Swabby as well. He's going to touch the wall though. So he's not going to quite get to Solo this time, but he's going to run off the cushion and he's going to get a massive run down the back straight away and he's going to be past Solo within a couple of laps. And Solo's now really struggling at the bottom. In fact, he's really slowed down and lost momentum while driver beside him flips over. That is That's Swabby. Swabby. Lyndon Swabby flips over after riding the wall on the exit of turn four. That's going to promote Solo back up to third again. It's going to promote Lionel uh, Fitch up into sixth, I think. And uh, Trevor Bavosky is going to be back in sixth if he can get back on track. So <laughs> everything's happening here. And despite being on his side, Bavosky might go through. As you see on the replay there, he just drives up onto the wall and can't keep control of the car. So that's very, very unfortunate for Swabby. And it looks like an issue for Solo. He's stopping on the bottom of the racetrack. Danny Solo has an issue. Something happened to him. Maybe he didn't put enough fuel in that car. Didn't expect 25 laps. That could be a thing. Yeah, that is something drivers do to try and do balance out some of the weight for these cars in these kind of races. And now that is now the third driver in the tow. He has just said, and I quote, someone didn't put enough fuel in my car. So you are exactly right on that. However, the man in control of the field since the drop of the green flag has been calling Marks off Linus. He has. He's uh, just driving away now. He's leading by about two seconds. The car behind is actually catching up. That's Joshua Wolf. But I think Marcel is taking it easy now, just making sure he gets it home to the checkered flag. And uh, while well, speaking of Solo, he still scored fifth. Bavarski might catch him for sixth, but Swabi is not. So I think Solo will actually make it through to the A main still, but we'll have to see as we're on the last lap here. And uh, Colin Marsolf is going to win the C main and move through to the A. Coming out of turn four, he'll take the checker flank to make it a sure thing. Colin Martsoff wins the C main. Second, Joshua Wolf. Third spot, Gabriel Ruse. The rest of the field is a lap down or more. Lonnie Finch, after starting for the pits, will come away in fourth. Bobrovsky and Swaby. As they cross the stripe, will be scored inside the top six, it appears. So that means Solo might have just got himself bumped out. Yes, with five laps down, Lane and Watley also do not advance from the C main in a crazy one. Yeah, Solo was one lap short of making it through there. So not putting enough fuel has unfortunately ended the night for him in a very unfortunate way. Indeed it has. You should look at that left one more time. The driver's door getting ready for the B main. Also 25 laps will be the distance as you see them set up on the track in the backdrop. Again, the top six would fans to finalize the 24 cars in the feature race today. It was Pudiklis is the pole sitter for the B main. Mason Martzoff starts second. Claude Berval third with Marcus Niskanen rounding out the top four. Behind them, Robert Lundgren had good short run pace. Question is, can he get the long run pace to make sure he can advance? Patrick Nee starts off in six in the 75. Corbin Solmanson will start in seven. Thomas Peterson wrecked in the lead of his heat. He'll start in P8. Well, Jared Morgan and Anne Fassi Ponzi round out the 10 drivers, the most we've seen in one event so far. But now it's going to be the question who's going to have the urgency? We see drivers like Peterson with speed in this one here. Who's your favorite? Well, Thomas Peterson, he was uh, leading one of the heat races, so I think he's going to be uh, one to be keeping an eye on here. He's going to take his time, but I think he's definitely going to be one of the guys to go through, and uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if we saw him at the front earlier well, before the race is over because uh, he's definitely got some good speed in that car. I think he has some good speed too. Just has to make sure that right rear doesn't ride the wall like he did in his heat that ended up finishing that respective heat from the lead. But Pudicus is in control of the field as the kinetic racing machine is on the bottom line on the outside line as Mason Martsoff for gun speed. Green flags up. Off and away we go as Pudicus gets up to two, three car lanes as Martsoff is stuck three oh, wide no. and stuck in contact four wide. Cars on the wall. Cars are sideways as we still keep on rolling. Patrick Nice is the luckiest of them all. That was Marcel riding the wall, and he's obviously dropped back all the way back in six. We have another crash. Oh, right. That's uh, Nice and uh, Fisiponti, I think. Yes, indeed it is. Fisiponti trying to ride the bottom side. 
Well, it looks like Nice just lost it on the bottom, in the middle bottom line to make that contact. So everything has scrambled up here. Look who's moved to third though. Jared Morgan, who started in ninth position, is now battling for second on the bottom line. Can he get the slide job? Yes, he can. Jared Morgan, who oh, finished no, Stone he's Cold around, last he's in the season, upside up. down. And that's Robert Lundgren who's upside down and has just taken the toe. His race may be done here with significant damage. Very unfortunate incident again, but that promotes Thomas Peters. And even though he's way behind the rest of the field, he's promoted him up to fifth. So I don't know if he's got an issue or not, but he's not up to speed. He's almost a second slower than everybody else. Maybe he had some contact there to start as uh, we have uh, Pericles in the lead and Morgan second pretty comfortably driving away from the rest of the field right now. And Clyde Burval is also fighting now for position as well. Here's what happened though at that start. That was crazy. You had four or five cards door baning each other. Yeah, that, I thought that would be a lot worse than it was. Obviously, a couple of cars got away from that with damage, but uh, just lucky that we didn't have a huge pileup and have to restart this race because that would have been really, really unfortunate. But uh, still going though, and uh, still got eight cars running in this one, so still a lot can happen. Six of which is on the lead lap so far. Fasciaponte, the last of which. Patrick Nice, the first driver, a lap down. As you see, Fasciaponte getting lapped now by the race leader on the outside cushion to the middle line goes Pudicus. Passes by the number 84 machine as he stays on the bottom line. Then again, Nice is about a quarter track behind for that transfer spot as Pudicus looks to maintain control of the field. Yeah, for now it looks like everybody's just cruising around here. We have a slight battle though for third. That's uh, Salomonson and uh, Belleville. They're going to be pretty much side by side. He's going to move up to the inside though. He's going to try and get a slide job, but uh, Salomonson is going to stay ahead as they have a lap car back there as well. And Salomonson is struggling, so that's going to promote Belleville up into third. Carbon Salomonson able to get by the lap driver though. He tries to fall behind the tire tracks now. Claude Berval once more in the middle line. 15 laps to go in the B main. Top six advance to the A main to decide who wins the King's Royal for the major series in the European split here on the iRacing Esports Network and Racebot TV. The action intensifying across this racetrack. It really is, and uh, well, Peterson is struggling back there in fifth. He's gotten his speed up slightly though, but he's not gonna be catching anybody by the looks of it. And as I'm saying, that fourth place in front of him gets a bit of a wiggle. That's Salomonson, but he's gonna keep going straight he's going all the way to the bottom though so Peterson and Salmonson might have a battle here for uh, fourth place coming into the last few laps yeah Peterson right now behind by a second next drivers for position are ways ways back a lap down in fact so right now Salmonson struggling as you see in the front of your screen off of four that allows Peterson to close up five car lengths looks more comfortable Peterson is right now on that cushion he is he's all the way up by the wall almost as uh, Salmonson is actually about two car widths down for some reason. I don't think he likes being up on the cushion. He's more on the slick stuff and that's obviously hurting him. Here comes Peterson again. Gets a huge run as Salmonson wiggles once more. And Peterson going to try and round him this time. Maybe he can put a slide job on him into the next corner as he gets a wiggle himself. Lots of lost momentum for Salmonson as he stays on the bottom line. They drift their way in the cushion, Peterson does. Peterson forced to check up though, as Solmanson slides back up the racetrack to make the block. And now he's riding that middle line instead. Well, Peterson is bump bouncing around the rear tires on the cushion with eight laps to go this time by. Both of these cars seems to be struggling really bad right now, but Solmanson sideways off every single corner, moving back and forth. So he looks like he's not in very much control of that car at the moment. And Peterson just closes right up on him again as he moves to the bottom. Peterson finding the cushion out by the wall. He's going to try and put the undercut. Now he's going to move on the outside as Salmonson moves down. And here they come. Oh, he's going to touch the wall and he's going to have to slow down again. And it looks like he's got the speed. It's just every time he tries to make the pass out of two, he lifts off the throttle and loses that momentum. What do you think it's going to take for Peterson to make this pass to get into fourth position? Because this could be a crucial track position spot on the grid for the A main on the line here. Well, he's just going to have to be patient and wait until he gets that massive run and gets to him at the very right spot. If he can just get to, his, to the rear of Salmonson's car right on the entry, I think he'll be able to slide around him. But he's not quite close enough anymore, so maybe Peterson has started to struggle or Salmonson has found a little cushion down there where he can get some speed. Indeed, the question is, can he get the speed on back? Because Salmonson has pulled away by an extra couple car lanes, now getting the middle and the bottom to work, sliding, slipping, sliding 
off more and more off the track. Solmanson loses momentum off the corner exit. The Peterson's been struggling in the 105s with four laps to go three this time by. Looks like he's regaining a bit more rhythm as he is in the same ballpark, 15 twos for fourth and fifth position. Yeah, they're lapping pretty much identical lap time series of Peterson. He's not getting any closer. He's out by the cushion all the way though, trying to get a different line here, a bit shallower exit, out by the wall on the back straight, but I don't think he's going to be able to do anything. There is doing similar lap times again, 15-1 that last time by. So uh, still both of them going through to the A main, so not too much, too bad for Peterson there, but I think he would have liked to get that four spot as he's getting actually closer here now with two laps to go. Yes, indeed. White flag is out for the race leader, though, in Pudaquis who has been dominant in this heat in this seat B main gap is almost five seconds as he takes the checker flag it was Pudiclis takes the B main for the Kings Royal Jared Morgan second third spot goes to Claude Burval as he rounds his way around the final corners Salmonson Peterson rounds the top five Bastia Ponte is the last driver to advance Martsoff Nice Lundgren and Niskanen all finished their days just before making it to the feature. And Linus, we're getting all set to go now in a few moments for the feature. Five minutes for these drivers to get ready. What do you take from what we've seen from the heats and these mains to try and prepare these drivers in some cases for the feature as the track state will reset to 40% here for the feature? Well, I think uh, the people that have spent the most time on the track here tonight are going to have a slight advantage, though they'll, they'll all be starting way at the back. So uh, the guys that go through from the first heat, they've been sitting here for about half an hour or so just waiting. So they're obviously going to need all these five minutes to get warmed up and get used to the track state here. But I think uh, it's going to be interesting to see. I think Peterson will have a lot more speed here in this uh, A main and try and work his way up through the field and potentially get into a top five. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the feature here for the Kings Royal on the iRacing Esports Network and, out and Race Spot TV for the major series. Kings Royal, stick around. of the best sim races. $100,000 on the line. Who will rise to the challenge? This is the most competitive and sought after season in iRacing World Championship history. This is where legends are made. This is the Porsche Esports Super Cup. After a thrilling heat race, after thrilling B and C mains, the drivers are getting all set to go for the Big Daddy, the feature for the Kings Royal for the Major Series here Plain Split here on the iRacing Esports Network and Race Spot TV. And what should be a thrower? I'm Justin Prince alongside me is Lance Bronstrom with Hugo Wee in the director's seat as we get all set to go for the 40-lap feature to decide 
who comes away as the winner of the European version of the Kings Royal here from the virtual Eldora Speedway in Rossburg, Ohio. I'm Justin Prince. It's going to be an interesting one. The track state reset now to 40% as they get ready on the warm-ups and get the track worked in. Track temperature results will drop the touch line as, as we get ready for this feature race. What are you keeping an eye on as these drivers get ready to battle 24 total? Well, from what I see in the warm-up, there's a lot of people going around, a lot of people trying to find the cushion here, and uh, Christian Challoner leading the warm-up by nearly two tenths ahead of uh, Riley Thompson, who's got two tenths down to Bobrovsky. So those two, Challoner and Thompson, I'm expecting them to clear the field, and then it's really, really tight all the way down. Indeed, right now, who are some of the drivers you're keeping an eye on as we get ready for the starting grid in a few moments? Who are your favorites and who are your underdogs, essentially? Well, Thomas Peterson coming from the back, he's not that quick in uh, in the warm-up, so I think he might be struggling, but uh, those winners from the B and C mains, they're definitely going to be one to keep an eye off. So that's uh, Uldis Pyrklis and uh, Colin Marsol. Uh, I'm going to try and keep an eye on them throughout the whole race and see how much they can climb and if, uh, if they get up to the top 10 or if they struggle and fall down. And don't forget, guys, like Christian Challenger, Riley Thompson amongst the drivers up at the front. Others like Travis Henderson showed speed. The drivers are getting ready for the grid though. Let's take a look at who's taking part of the 24 car field for the Kings Royal feature for the European split. The first driver on the field is Christian Schoenier. As he's looking to extend his points lead, he'll start alongside TDR's Riley Thompson. Andreas Robertson showed speed in the heat races, will start in third with Mike Gunn, your heat race four winner, starting in P4. Mateus Magnussen starts fifth with Dakota DiCienzo in the sixth position. Nicholas Skeets with Kinetic Racing will start in seventh with the bombshell motorsports machine of Kurt Crum rounding out the top eight. Cordell Cologne and Enrico Leinhardt round out the top ten here, Linus. Travis Henderson 11, Stefan Wong in uh, 12th in the sixth row. Uh, seventh row is Colin Marsolf and Uldis Pudeklis, the winners from the B and C main. Then we got Joshua Wolf, Jared Morgan, Gabriel Roos, Claude Belwall, Ly Lonnie Fitch and Corbin Salmonson rounding out the top 20. Trevor Vrabrowski in 21st, Thomas Peterson will start in 22nd, while Lyndon Swaby and Adam Fassiaponte round up the 24 drivers in the field for the feature. Again, 40 laps the distance, caution flags are on, no green-white checker finish. They will start single file on each of the restarts if need be though. That is something Dirt Series do here in the iRacing service for reference sake, where they do single file restarts to try and reduce the amount of incidents. Today should be a thrower though for some of these drivers. It will be, and with the cautions being on, the question is, did some people underfuel their cars? Because that is the thing you can do to reduce weight. And if you expect three or four cautions, underfueling the car can gain you a lot of speed. So uh, we're going gonna, we're gonna to have to look for people running out of fuel if we have a very clean race here. We've seen a couple already have fuel issues in the CNB mains. Well, drivers have that same situation here. The focus is on the front, though. Chowanier in control of the field. Green flags up. The European Kings Royal is underway for the major series. And they're already three wide for second spot. Magnussen slide jumps his way by Robertson. Gets to P3 by the back stretch. It's a very good start from him. Chandler cleared out though. Oh, and, trouble uh, in the back. Oh, here we go. One of the TDR cars upside down, and it's Dakota DiCienzo that brings up the caution, not even a lap into the race. So the first yellow comes out for the 07 machine, who had technical issues down the back stretch, then got hooked, it looked like, a, with the kinetic racing machine to bring up the first yellow. DiCienzo's car destroyed. But that refreezes the field with Chowner, Thompson, and Magnuson now in the top three, along with Gaunt. Looks like everybody got through that all right as well, so shouldn't be too much damage as uh, DiCienzo is rejoining the field. There is going to be one or two laps down, though, so uh, very unfortunate start for him, but he looked like he had some technical issues, so uh, hope he gets that sorted out and maybe he'll be able to get back through the field. And we've seen the same thing, unfortunately, for him in earlier on tonight when he was up at the front, however, was able to get through it. But his teammate Thompson is still in second. Chalonier had a good launch, though, to start this race off. And now 
He'll be in control of the field single file when we get back racing as the pace lights are off. One lap to go to green here in Chandler. He had an amazing start to the race as we see another replay here. They just hook, he goes into the wall and uh, there's actually one car driving into him. I'm not really sure that was, if that was the 85 of Stefan Wang. So he might have some slight damage to the front of his car. No cosmetic damage for Wang. We'll have to see how the car handles though as Challenger brings them on the bottom line as we get back racing. Lap 5 of 40 when we get the green flag up of the stand. Challenger backing them up. Hits the gas. Back racing we go for the Kings Royal. And a good start for the drivers inside the top four. The battle is already heating up for third with Skates wanting to get by Magnuson on the slight jump on the bottom side. He can't really get him get it done though. Magnuson gets clear and Skates actually slow gets really slow on the bottom. And here comes Mike Gone for fourth place on the bottom. He can't put the slide job on him, but he's going to move up nearly, make contact. He's going to be on the bottom again. Can he slide up in front of him? No, he's actually going to keep it all the way to the bottom. He's going to get a good exit, but uh, Skeets is going to get, sorry. Yeah, Skeets is going to get speed on the on the outside, so he's going to hold on to fourth. Gaunt tries to put up the slide job and block the runner. Robertson able to do so. So holds on to P5 for now. Car in the wall in front. It's Magnuson that loses a ton of momentum and bunches everyone up alongside the cushion. Mike Gaunt looking to take advantage while Robertson is slow, trying to slide job on the bottom side. Gaunt battling for fourth position, takes the spot away from Skeets. Skeets had to really check up there to not run into the back of Gaunt, who's now put his eyes on Matthias Magnussen here for oh, third Oh, trouble place. for second, Riley Thompson hits the wall. Thompson saves it though, but loses a ton of time on the racetrack. Thompson rid the outside fence and lost five, six, ten car lengths to the race leader. Very fortunate for him to be able to hold on to that. Question is, has he got any damage as oh, he goes and around? There and he goes. There we go. Caution is out, and he's going to hit the inside wall as well. Wow. What was that about holding on to it? Well, you <laughs> very unfortunate. I think he might have got some damage from that first one, so maybe that's why uh, he went around this second time. They call that the commentator's curse. Thompson will get the privilege of starting in the back of the field after the spin from second, but that refreezes the field already quarter way through the King's Royal feature for the major series European region action. But that's going to bunch everyone up. One of the drivers we've been watching so far in this field, Mike Gunn, has been looking good off the starts and has been looking good in terms of slide jobs so far. One narrow look at the replay, though, with some contact. And this seems to be some of the Grizzly Motorsports cars that hit one of the RTDR cars. That was uh, the number 50 of uh, Cordell Colon. Cologne, yeah. Cologne was one of the cars that made contact there. I don't, didn't really see who it made contact with, but it seems like they both kept on going, so uh, no major damage done there. Speaking of damage, we mentioned the car hitting the outside wall. I'm not sure if you noticed this, but I think I noticed it a little bit, and I think this might have had a factor. Do you think Thompson might have damaged the suspension with the cra and potentially crapped his car to lose it like that? I think that uh, could be what happened because it looked like he just lost it way too early in the turn, and uh, with him being that experienced as he is and having that speed, I don't think he would loop it like that if he didn't have a problem with the car. So uh, that could very well be a thing. Just hope he gets it; they get it fixed quickly so he can make his charge back through the field. The iRacing official pace truck goes off the track as Christian Chownier is off to the loud pedal green flags back out. We're racing once more at Eldora. And a clean start for the top four. Joshua Wolf though bullies his way past Kirk Crum and tries to take the high side away from Skeets. That was a great start from Wolf, and here he moves to the inside of Skeets as well now, and he's actually going to get fourth place, and he started this race in 15, so he's made up a ton of positions here in 14 laps as he puts the slide job on Skeets and uh, secures that fourth position. And here comes Crum as well to the inside of Skeets. He's going to try and put the slide job on him into three and four, but he's not going to be able to quite do it. Uh, Marsolf is coming, though, from behind him, and he's going to clear him on the outside. Colin Marsolf, a teammate of the, the seven machine in this field, is getting the run and just hit the back end and Nicholas Skeets forced to check up though as Kirk Crum tries to get by both of them on the slide jump. Can't get it done. Car's oh, car spinning around. in front. It's Wolf. Josh Wolf brings the caution out once again. That is because it looks like the seven we were talking about, Mike Gaunt, nearly lost it out of turn four by scraping the wall. That's very, very unfortunate for Wolf. He had such an amazing run going and uh, 
see if we can get a replay up of that, see what happened. But uh, yeah, Wolf again, commentators, Carissa said he was going well and then he spins out. So sorry again for that. And it can be Hard so difficult to ride the cushion though, Linus. You can see a lot of drivers, if they tap the wall too hard, it can break the rear axle suspension we've seen with Riley Thompson. How difficult is it, in your opinion, to try and ride that cushion line when you know it's the fastest way around to keep up with a guy like Chalonier, who, mind you, has peak racing experience this for the past few years? Yeah, you pretty much have to uh, be up there. As we see a replay here, the car in front of him, the seven on Mike Gaunt, he just got a bit loose and he, Wolf just drove straight into the back of him. But you kind of have to keep up on that cushion and uh, it's such a thin line. If you step over it, you're going to hit the wall. And if you go a bit too quick, you're going to hit the wall. So it's... Uh, have to be up there but it's really hard to keep a straight line or a solid line on it to be quick so it's uh, you gotta practice a lot to be as good as Christian is because he's doing an amazing job with it here today and as you saw with Gaunt you, you just pushed a little too hard and got sideways off the corner I'll be quite honest this is the first time I think I've seen Chalonier on the dirt on the iRacing service of course we've seen his dominance this year in the major series on the road course side we've seen his skills on the oval side in the peak series it's been an impressive run, mind you, is the fastest car in pre in the week qualifying to set the splits for the European side at least, has been the quickest car essentially all night so far in the European region's main feature and his heat. Yeah, he's been doing a great job all night long and uh, if he can just keep going like he is, I think nobody's going to be a match for him. Uh, looking slightly behind him though, fourth place Colin Marshall, winner of one of the mains. That's uh, going to be one to keep an eye on as we go green again. Green flag Car sound of us. Kurt Crum, you're watching on board. And we stay green even with that set car on the wall you mentioned. But Crum watching along as the action follows through in front. You see his battle on the right side of your screen. Surrounded now by three, four different drivers for the battle for the top five. It was Magnuson hitting the wall, and he's actually dropping. Uh, oh, and Crumb just second, got hit. One in the wall. He's hooked into the fence. Loses the front clip as the caution is out. And we're back in our caution just past the halfway point. Crumb got a severe amount of damage and lost his entire front end on his 410 sprint. Yeah, he got hooked by, I believe that was Skeets there, but he got sideways in front of him, so he lost to himself, and Skeets had nowhere to go, so it's very, very unfortunate for him, but uh, nothing Skeets can do other than to try and slow down as quick as he can, but as you see on the replay here, going to see him get slightly loose, and then Skeets is behind him, and he just can't do anything. And now you can see no more front clips, some more damage as well, just on part of that suspension. You can see the reasoning now to have to go into the pit lane, as we've seen a few different drivers basically have their days done in some of the main in some of the mains and heats earlier on tonight. But it's a one-two for kinetic racing up at the front on the bright side. Chalonier and Magnuson just so happen to be one-two in the pro point standings entering today. Are one-two on the track so far? They are. Magnuson had that slight contact with the Waldo on the last restart, but it just doesn't look like it hurt him as it was able to pull away from the guys behind him and uh, Marcel now winner of the C main up into third position so he's right up there it's gonna be interesting to see how he can keep up with Magnussen and possibly Challenger as this race goes on 15 laps to go lights are off the official iRacing pace truck as Challenger has been leading every single lap so far here tonight Will that change, though, as multiple challengers try and come up the field? Chalonier brings to himself to the bottom. Green flags up. Back racing we go. And a good start for the race later. Magnuson with a decent start as well. Martsoff also good inside the top three. A big jump, though, for Skeets. He's gained three, four spots nearly. In fact, will make the pass on Henderson to get up in the top five. Skeets had started in P7 at the drop of the green flag. He uh, was dropping back though, he passed people before the green flag came out, so I wonder if he'll get penalized for that, it looked a bit uh, yeah. sketchy, but we'll see what happens. I'm curious to see if that's going to be a situation for him too. We'll have to keep an eye on it for Skeets as he tries to keep up with the battle for the time being. Chowner's pulled away already by more than a second with his fastest lap of that time by. Battle for second though, Magnuson nearly hit the wall, Colin Martsoff up into second spot on the outside cushion. Magnuson seems to be pushing too hard as we have a caution again. I don't know where that is. This looks to be out of uh, the first turn. 
Caution flag again is out of the racetrack. Can't find what that was for, though. And an interesting caution. It had a spin off turn two. Some car did a 360 trying to figure out who that was. And we'll get that for you as soon as possible here. As we are back in a caution under 10 laps to go. And I'll be quite frank. This is similar, running similar to what we've seen for the international split for Max Speed TV and the iRacing Esports Network. Where James Robbie won the race under caution for the pro split. What do you expect now with about 10 laps, under 10 laps to go and we back, get back on our green for this split now? Well, things are definitely going to intensify, I believe, and I think we're going to keep getting all these cautions. This last one, though, was uh, number 16 of Linden Swabi getting sideways and getting clipped by Stephen Wang, and then he did a 360, so that brought the caution out for this time, and 10 laps to go, nobody's going to hold back, so expect some more close racing with uh, some following cautions, unfortunately. And Chow and is backing off the pace truck big time here. Nine laps to go when we get back under green. I think he wants them all bunched up, actually, the way he's forming up here. Already about nearly a quarter track behind the pace truck. Yeah, this is uh, very tactical from him, and uh, he's going to get an early jump here. And now Marsolf is up into second. So uh, on the lap times, it's been about half a second slower on his fast lap. But if he can follow Chandler, get in his lines, maybe he can hold on. Chalonier off on the gas as the pace truck's off the circuit. Back racing we go again here at the Big E. Chalonier riding the cushion. Martsoff still holds on to second. The battle starts to heat up though for fourth after a good start by Gaunt. That was a great start. Skis on the outside of Gaunt on the inside and we have another caution. Caution again is out. That's and I believe Gabriel this time it might be Ruse. Yes indeed it's Ruse that got hit by Andreas Robertson in turn two. That brings the caution out again. And at this point, Chalonier is in the great is in the best position if this race continues the way it goes to win this main. Yeah, he really is. Uh, Marcel had a really good launch there though, kept up with Chalonier, but obviously he never got a chance to uh, show us what he could do. So once again, right behind him and he's going to have about 6 laps to uh, 5 laps to try and make something happen. Drivers coming out of the pit lane, Ruse. Also coming down is Lonnie Finch, who was 19th last time by. Lonnie Finch currently is crapping, though I think in part the reason why, though, he came down the pit lane here. But, uh, yeah, the restart will come with about five laps to go, essentially, for these drivers. Two to go signal on the track. How frustrating is this as a driver, I know, as I know you drive on the service, of course, to know that you might have speed to make the pass and challenge Chalonier, but you don't have the laps essential under green so far to challenge. Well, it doesn't really matter where you are on the track. If you're racing somebody and you're racing clean and you have a good race, you think you can beat them and then the caution just keeps coming out over and over and over again. It gets really frustrating, but it's just part of it, especially in a race like this where, uh, where everybody's so close and uh, most people aren't really used to this kind of racing either. You, you, it'll happen. And you see the incident on your screen and unfortunately nowhere for Ruse to go. His kinetic racing teammate in Chalonier is still in control of the field. Has led every single lap so far. Will lead them to the green once more. Five laps to go in the Kings Royal. And a runny second hit the fence. Opens up the door for Magnus into a battle for second. And, behind and him they're has... crashing behind him. Seems like we'll be staying green now. Oh, that's somebody no, in the wall. Cologne's oh, no, Cologne's in the wall. Cologne's in the wall. Big time crash. Caution back out with four to go. And now it's the question if we pass the point of return. Marks off those flipping down the front stretch. Right as the caution came out, he made contact with Magnuson's right rear and it put him in the fence. Magnuson came up right in front of him, put him in the fence and sent him flipping, but Marsolf is going to get that position back because the caution was already out. So Marsolf is going to keep going in fourth and he'll obviously be hoping that this race is over by now. And he's already into the pit lane, it looks like. So that damage looks like a potential meatball. Mind you, you can only make it up to three laps with a meatball essentially before you get the disqualification flag so just outside the range to actually take the checker yeah, that's very very unfortunate for oh Marcel. and cologne just hit the tire he just hit the bent water barrels on top of that this is what happened with the brand the caution by the way up on your screen well that was in part of it there it looks like the triple six making the contact there with cologne 
But Cologne's damage compounded. The question is now, though, are we going to get an error restart here? No green-white checkered for the Kings Royal. We will indeed get one. A one-lap shootout here, Linus, to decide it. Yep, and that means white flag's going to come out. It's not going to end on the yellow, so we will get this one lap, and, well, everybody's going to be throwing it all out here. Magnuson, I think, is, might try to jump start here to get a run on Challenger, see what he can do, uh, and everybody's just going to go crazy behind him. Here we go. What a boy, Magnuson. He has yet to win a major series event this season. Challenger, though, with the better jump. Green flags back out. White flag out with it. One lap shootout to decide the Kings Royal. Travis Henderson already moves up to second. Chalonier doesn't get the best of launches. Just has to defend one last set of corners. Henderson sends it deep. Henderson can't keep the momentum. Christian Chalonier wins the Kings Royal. Second Henderson, third Magnuson. Leon Hart and Skeets round out the top five. And that looked like there were some challenges from behind. Henderson tried everything he could. Just couldn't get there in time, though, Linus, before that back end started slipping and he lost the momentum. Yeah, he had a good run in that last corner, but Chandler kept it tight and forced Henderson to slightly check up, and that brings these cars way sideways more than you want on this slick kind of track. So he's lucky that Magnuson didn't get around him on the outside either because he was really close too, but he also lost some uh, some grip off that corner. So a good race by Chandler, well defended, and a good try from Henderson and Magnuson. He'll immediately go right to victory lane as, yes, it's drivable. As you can see him sit in victory lane and get a chance to celebrate here and hopes to draw those fireworks potentially as well we've seen in the real world event. But Christian Chalonier wins another major series event on the season, his fifth total, this time though on the dirt. He came up in front of Travis Henderson for Grizzly Motorsports, his strongest finish of the season. In front of Mateus Magnuson for third. Enrico Leinhardt finished off in fourth, but Nicholas Geese round out the top five. Joshua Wolf is in sixth with Riley Thompson, Mike Gaunt, Giotos Pudiquist, and Andreas Robertson rounding out the top 10 in this one. 11 spot went to Trevor, Trevor Verbrowski with Thomas Peterson in 12. Adam Fonsi Aponte finished 13th. Kirk Crum recovered after his incident to 14th. Cohen Martsoff, after flipping, came away 15th. Jared Morgan, Lyndon Swabe, Stefan Juan, Corbin Solmanson and Gabriel Ruth inside the top 20. The last drivers on the field, Claude Verval in 21st position. Finish in front of Lonnie Finch. Drivers a lap down. Dakota DiCienzo, Cordell Cologne at the time of the checkered flag. An exciting finish here once again, Linus. And some exciting action. Lots of battling. In the end, though, Christian Schauner leads every single lap, though, of the feature. Yeah, he had an amazing evening. One uh, qualifying practices, warm-ups heat and the final he's just unstoppable today and Henderson got close but great battling all the way through the field for this final unfortunately we had quite a lot of cautions but uh, still a lot of battles all the way through and uh, some amazing racing definitely absolutely here and that kept a lot of the eyes focused on this racetrack as the sun continued to set down and the action essentially heated up here who were you most impressed of run wise as you take a look at some of the highlights from tonight's action well, I'm definitely impressed by Challenger and the way he uh, he dominated the whole evening. And then up until the end there, Colin Morsolf getting from winning the C-Main up into second place uh, with a few laps to go. He had an amazing run until that crash. Thankfully for him, he managed to climb back up to 15th on, those on that very last lap. So uh, they fixed his car quickly and got him back out and he had a, a strong ending. The other B-Main winner got up to ninth, so that's pretty good as well from uh, all this put a list, but uh, overall a pretty pretty exciting evening of racing. We did a look at the race highlights from some of the action. There was a lot of comers and goers essentially too. Guys like Kirk Crum, I mentioned him outside the top 10 at the finish. As you seen, was up as high as 50 before his incident. So the some of the drivers just had some bad luck, it seems, the worst possible times that were contenders early on in this one. Yeah, there was a lot of people coming and going at the front and uh, so a lot of different names up behind Christian Challoner, but uh, in the end I think most of the drivers that were supposed to be there got there and uh, pretty unfortunate incidents all the way through the night. We saw Solo running out of field as well. He would have been one to count on in this uh, feature had he got here. So, And with all the cautions as well in this feature, nobody ran out of field. There's the bright side at least. And on the bright side for guys like Pudiklis, 
that avoidance got him a top not 10, mind you. Drivers like Martsov, though, hoping to see some luck, though. They didn't get it, though, at the time of the checkered flag, as you see with a lot of this action. Some great racing once again here. As again, Christian Chalonier comes away as the winner of the King's Royal European split this for 2019. He joins James Robbie, who was the international split winner. Real World winner, winner Brad Sweet and victors inside Victory Lane here at the River Speedway. Some great action. And now we get to go toward post-race coverage with some interviews. Joshua Wolf came away with a top six finish today. Torque Freak Racing driver standing by here at the edge of the racetrack, Joshua. It was a wild one, at least from the broadcast booth, it seems, especially that feature. How does it feel come away with a top 10 finish here today in your 410 Sporting? Oh, it feels great. Um, I had a little bit of issue um, kind of right just before halfway, but um, really liked having that track slicked off and being able to uh, run up top. And it was... Um, a lot of fun, just wish I would have been up closer towards the end there, maybe see if I could go run for the uh, win. Talk us through some of the difficulties uh, in this race. You mentioned them a little bit there, but the difficulties to try and not just pass, but try and maintain positions because there was a lot of comers and goers, and in some cases a lot of drivers who lost control of their cars. I believe you were actually one of them at one point in the future. Yeah, um... I think it more of is just kind of maybe not as much experience on dirt. Um, I do a little bit of it. Um, not too bad running here, but um, you kind of, some of the faster guys catch up to other guys or you just make a mistake and you don't check up quick enough if you're not as familiar with it and can end up with spinning around or um, getting some damage. Um, I was fairly fortunate not to really have too much damage um, required me to have to pit. I just had to make up all that track position I lost. Indeed, right. As we continue to look at some of the passes you were trying on drivers like Travis Henderson here today, a, how much practice time did you try and have to put in to make sure you got a good sense of this track? Because again, majority, if not most, of the field here tonight not having the mo the mu much of the dirt experience, so to speak, including guys like Chalonier? Um, probably not as much as I tend to at other tracks. Um, I happen to, because of work, come into a lot of sessions where there was no grip anywhere. Um, so I was actually, most of my laps were run right on the cushion, um, trying to learn how to do that. And then the practice right before the race, I ran a lot of laps just everywhere, trying to feel how the car is going to handle. And... Um, I think that definitely helped out a lot. Um, I did make some passes. I think some of it was knowledge of how single file restarts work. So there were some passes that I made there, but um, I think definitely a lot more practice um, on the slick track helped out with getting me that sixth place. Next race on the schedule for the major series is going to be on to the asphalt again. It is the Michigan 400. Your thoughts on heading towards the cup cars for round number 11 for the major series i am looking really forward to that i know challenger being a pro driver is going to be hard to beat there um but definitely looking forward to that um tend to be labeled more as an oval driver but i actually have been doing a lot more road racing recently so might have lost a little bit touch on that but hopefully um compared to a lot of the other european guys that might just do road coursing most of the, uh racing it will be um, kind of look forward to that one. Hopefully, get a decent result there, and uh, definitely gonna be interesting with the new package. I haven't done much racing on this new package, so see how that turns out. Is there anyone you want to thank before you let you go here today, Josh? I uh, thank uh, our sponsors, uh, Infinity Decals and Teamspeak, um, for being on board with us, and um, all the guys um, on my team that I actually own, Grizzly, uh, working on the setup. Um, and just thank you guys for putting on a great broadcast. Thank you very much for the time, Josh. Congratulations on the sixth place finish. Thanks. And that was Joshua Wolf. He came away six today. The man, though, who came away with the checker flag was Christian Schallener.
as Christian gets to celebrate again in the Major Series, his fifth win for the Major Series European split of 2019, and a 1-2 with his teammate. Christian, how does it feel to be back in victory lane, this time though on the dirt? Yeah, I mean, we've had a bunch of races where we've we've been in the top five, but it's been actually a while since, since I guess I picked up a win. I know the start of the season was really good. Kind of a little disappointed to sort of pick up the win the way I did today. I, I feel like we were a bit down on racing with the yellows and so on. So that was, that was a bit of a shame. I would have liked to have kind of raced it for a bit more. But yeah, it was, uh, it's, good to, it's good to pick up another win, especially before the end of the year. And I think points-wise, that's, that's pretty much kind of locked it now, I hope. But we'll see. Yeah, you came in with a gigantic lead, I have to admit, in the point standings. Specifically, the points gap was around 554 points in front of your teammate who finished off in second. But there was a lot of drivers that might not have had the most experience on dirt trying to prepare for this race. What was your preparation like to make sure you're all set to go for the King's Royal, knowing that a lot of the field might be on the first time on dirt? Uh, well, I mean, the, the biggest thing that we focused on really was trying to just get raw speed out of the car because we knew that we knew that qualifying would be a big thing and we actually we kind of did a community setup stream on wednesday where the the exact setup that i used there you can you can go and grab that for free but that was that was kind of what we put out because we knew that uh maybe it wouldn't be the most popular race because of it being kind of a bit unique and it's it's a highly specialized field and and really this is kind of a a new a new thing for me i've only really done two dirt races and one of them was was in the majors again last year so we we did know it was going to be difficult Hello, and the, yeah, the inexperience of the field was probably going to play a bit of a part in in kind of how the the racing went uh but yeah overall really happy with the car we did exactly what we needed to do we we grabbed the pole we won the heat and that that set us up to to really control the race uh, i can't can't really be happier with with what we did there as you mentioned, it's kind of community set that's available for our drivers. For those that don't know, how was your car feeling as the race progressed and as the track kind of transitioned as the drivers roared the way around and, and threw some of the slick stuff and really drying out some of the dirt? Well, especially the the heat race where it's kind of really fresh is, is pretty much a trivial exercise. It's, it's 15 laps and you can just run down low in, in both corners and, and then you can migrate to the top especially if you're in the later heats where it's going to run up a bit more. The feature was considerably more difficult the biggest thing I can say from from what we did was put the top wing position all the way to the back and and if, you, if you're if you still struggling with that just take a little bit of rear stagger out it will make you a bit slower but it'll make the car a lot easier for you to drive so if people are struggling with that and they think handling is going to be a problem that's definitely what I would recommend and that's what we did by the end of the race i had my top wing all the way rearward and and was kind of just pedaling it i i was i was trying really hard just to not grab the wall because i knew if i did that then it was it, it was going to slow me down so much that i was probably going to lose the lead and, and that would really be it next race for the major series schedule is one that uh how do i put this lightly you have a very, very high chance of coming away with, I have to be honest. The Michigan 400, Peak Series is actually coming there on August the 6th. How do you feel about your Peak setup and how it could transition potentially to racing in the Major Series later this month? Uh, well, you see, this is this is kind of funny when it comes to the Major Series and uh, Cup Series races, actually, because kind of as you alluded to, the expectation is to win. It, it really is, and it's kind of hard to get away from that because we've we've been really fast in the peak series recently with the past two races we've pretty much had cars capable of winning the race so definitely i don't think that's going to change going into michigan that said it's it's not michigan as everybody knows it it's it's a lot closer to daytona so there's a lot more pack running and and that's definitely going to play into a bit of unpredictability the expectation absolutely is to be contending and the goal is definitely to win that race but there might be a kind of an element of chance that sort of prevents that. But yeah, definitely, definitely should be one of my, if not the strongest race of the year for me. Second to last question, I'm going to ask before I believe that before some competitors ask, can I have your setup? I know that's a joking question, but I'm expecting potentially some competitors to try. 
<laughs> yeah, we get uh, we get a lot of questions about Cup Series setups and so on. Uh, and pretty much the way I work is that if any, any anything I make solo or anything I make with somebody and then we kind of have an agreement like we did with this, this setup for this week was built with Ashton Crowder and we, we, we did it as entirely as a community thing and he knew right from the go that it'd be going out to people. So in, in those senses, um, I, I do give things out and a couple of the GT series I run, I also give out the setups for that again, cause it's, it's solo work or the guys involved know. When it comes to the cup stuff, there's so many people involved that I can't possibly get enough agreement to, to do that. So I will help mm -hmm. people with those setups, but I, I can't give you mine just because yeah. it's, it's not mine to give. Understandable. And that's some just want to clarify that. So it's on the record before people ask as well. But is there anyone you want to thank before we say goodbye to you? Uh, yeah, I'd say big. Big thanks to Ashton for working on the setup with me this week. That that helped a ton, and he helped me a lot with the driving aspect of this car too. So, yeah, big thank you to him. If if it wasn't for his help, I don't think I would have won that. And uh, I'd just like to give a shout out for the Kinetic guys for really running as well as they did. Like you said, Matthias picked up a second, and that's that's awesome for us in points. I think we got a huge lead now. So that's yeah, it, it pretty much couldn't have really gone any better as a team race. Thank you very much for the time. Congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Christian Chalini are coming away with the victory today. Mateus is, pardon me, third on the grid as Linus will be standing, is standing by with him. Linus? Matthias, uh, first of all, congratulations on a good night. First, second in the heat to Chaloner and then third in, uh, in the feature after a very, very strong evening. So uh, what do you take away from tonight and how, uh, how frustrating is it when the cautions just keep coming out like this? Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, it was a good fun race. Well, it, it wasn't too much racing in the end. That was pretty boring though, but uh, I struggled with traction a lot, so it wasn't easy. <laughs> I couldn't say that. It was definitely one of the most difficult races. I have never driven this car before, or I think I only tried dirt once, so this was definitely difficult, but fun though. Saying that you've never driven this before, how much preparation did you have for this particular race with practice and such, getting used to uh, the slick track and uh, getting a good as, as good a result as you did? Well, I wish I had more practice, for sure. <laughs> I think I only managed about 200 laps coming up to this, but uh, one thing I didn't practice was uh, this slick track state. Uh, I never knew this uh, track could be so slippery, so I think uh, in the last couple of laps I actually touched the wall and I, that was definitely because of the lack, lack of preparation for the track state. Well, it was still fun. Considering all that, you did an amazing job holding on to third, so uh, big well done on that. And uh, next time you're in the cup car at uh, Michigan, how excited are you about that? Well, I think it's going to be the same there. Uh, I have never driven real oval. It's the only time here in majors, so it's going to be interesting for sure. And I'm definitely going to do more preparation for that one because uh, at least dirt I found a little bit easier than the ovals. It's so close racing and there's many good drivers here in, in majors, so I need to prepare quite a lot for that one. Well, good luck with that one. Uh, anybody you want to thank before we let you go? Oh, I want to thank the, the Kinetic team and the organizers for Majors and you guys, of course, who do all the good broadcasting. Well, thank you very much and uh, well done. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Justin? Thank you very much, Linus. That was Matthias Magnussen coming away third. Last the driver standing by is one that had a roller coaster of emotions tonight. Had a bad heat race, had a good main. Good main. But had a rough feature. Jared Morgan coming away 16th tonight. Jared, how was it racing on the dirt this evening? And I believe we might have a tech issue because we cannot hear you, Jared. Uh, we're going to try you one more time. Jared, can you say, can you hear us? And that is unfortunate. So Jared Morgan unfortunately has a technical issue with the mic. Uh, we'll... With that, we'll quickly, I guess we'll let him try and fix that and see if we can get him back. But real quickly, before we say goodbye, I guess, Linus, your final thoughts here after an entertaining race. 
Well, it was uh, certainly exciting. First time I commentate on uh, dirt oval racing. It was definitely different, but it was really fun and very, very intense. Uh, I just wish it would have been a bit more green, but that's uh, that's the way it goes, unfortunately, even in real life on the dirt most of the time. So uh, still really fun and very good racing, and it just would have been fun to see if Henderson or Magnussen could have put up a fight to Chandler there at the end, but uh, overall very very intense and good racing. There was indeed, especially when it was green. And we'll have to see how they do at Michigan. I think that's going to be absolutely nuts because we've seen with this, with the new draft package, it's kind of like Talladega almost, like in the first 10, 15 laps of a run. Then after that, the momentum, who you work with, etc., becomes a lot more important and it can become more spread out. The question is, how is that going to factor in once we get to the race itself with the uh, especially with Chowanir being the most experienced out of that, I think it's fair to say. Well, with this new package that you have in NASCAR with uh, with the new cup cars, practice and uh, experience will definitely help. And it's completely different mentality. It's a lot like the super speedways. Uh, it's a lot of drafting. You suck up to the car in front and you just have to take every gap that you can. If you lift that and, be, and go too careful, you're just going to drop a ton of positions. And it's... Uh, it's definitely an, an advantage to, for Chandler to have all this experience in that car. We'll have to see how the race goes there. We'll try one more time with Jared Morgan. Jared, do you have a copy? I ten Roger, Justin. Okay, there we go. Jared Morgan in 16th position at the checkered flag for the feature. As I was trying to allude to, you were having a you had a roller coaster night essentially. Rough heat, good main, rough feature. What are your thoughts on tonight's race? Uh, you know, that's actually a common theme for me when I race. Uh, I, I think the track was a lot slicker than a lot of us planned for. Uh, I, I actually found out that in my uh, main, I was actually able to run the bottom when most cars couldn't, and that's where I actually made up most of my positions. We've seen on top of that, though, a lot of people trying to make passes then lose the momentum back, say, on the top side as Harris tried to slide job on the bottom. How difficult was it for you to try and make the passes, say, when that bottom wasn't working, as you mentioned, to gain your spots? Impossible, because I was stone dead last in qualifying and throughout <laughs> most of the rest of the week, so... <laughs> Why were you stone dead last in qualifying? You know, I was asking the team that, and they couldn't figure it out either. I was flat-footing it along the same line everybody else was. I was just a, a brick. What's your experience on dirt, if you don't want me asking? I uh, ran the Dirt Late Model Dream a couple years ago. I think that was 2017 we did that, and then last year we ran, what was it, Knoxville, and then this year here. That's pretty much it. <laughs> hmm. Either way, you came away 16th in the sprint cars here tonight. Next race, we go into cup cars at Michigan for the Michigan 400. What's your take on going to what is essentially craziness on the iRacing service at tracks like Michigan this year? Uh, I haven't driven Michigan since the new package came out, but this is my wheelhouse otherwise. Uh, I'll be debuting a new paint scheme under a new brand of car since the last time I was seen here. So that'll be exciting enough as it is. No sponsors still, but definitely worth trying to bring it in. And uh, where it is in the, uh, our garage area, we'll have a competitive car. We'll see how competitive it is at Michigan. Is there anyone you want to thank before we let you go here tonight, Jared? Uh, Josh and the rest of the boys back at Grizzly since they get all everything done. Uh, Travis for sending me one of his setups as well since that seemed to actually do quite well for us. And you guys here for broadcasting and Mike for setting up the majors for us like he does every year. Thank you very much for the time, Jared. Congratulations on a 16th place finish in the feature. Thank you, Justin. That was Jared Morgan coming away 16th tonight in the feature for the Kings Royal. But it's time to say goodbye here on iRacing Esports Network and Race Spot TV. For Linus Bromstrom and for Hugo Wee, I'm Justin Prince saying so long and thank you for tuning in for what was some exciting dirt racing action. The American Split comes up in just a few hours. The Global Sim Racing Channel will have your coverage. Be sure to tune in for that. But we'll see you next time here for the European region for the Michigan 400. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday.